Hello again, everybody. Mike Flanagan here with the Hall of Famer, Carolyn Doran Ballard. We're here in Grand Rapids, Michigan for another great show from Junior Goal. We got the U15 boys and U15 girls coming up. The girls up first. Yes, and uh, I just, you caught me while I was pulling on a blanket here because I'm a little cold right now, so sorry about that. Um, we have an exciting field, and I'm going to tell you why. Because we have some repeaters, which we've talked about earlier, as in Avery, some newcomers, but the talent level, just like the U12 division, they are prepared. There is no stranger to the lights. They bowl a lot of youth events together around the country, so they're familiar with each other, and I think it's going to be an exciting show. Yep, coming up first, we've got the U15 girls. Our number three seed is Kaylin Block, and she's going to take on, from Hawaii, Samantha Tanahailua. And then the winner of that is going to take on Avery Doom again. So that is our stepladder final here for the U15 girls coming up here on Bowl TV. The in-house announcements are happening right now. They're introducing the players. We'd also like to thank Jason Butler and his staff here at Fairwinds for their hospitality and support this week at the Junior Gold Championships. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the players competing for the 2022 Junior Gold Championship in the girls under 15 division. In our opening match, she hails from Islip, New York. Please put your hands together for Kaylin Block. And her opponent from Pearl City, Hawaii, Samantha Kanahailu. <laughs> and our top seed, she hails from San Diego, California. Please put your hands together for Avery Dumagan. On behalf of the Junior Gold Tournament team, we'd like to thank all the parents, families, and spectators for their support of the 2022 Junior Gold Championship. Well, and fans, just a reminder, we kindly ask that you silence your cell phones to prevent any distractions from our athletes during the show. All right, All right here we go. How about a great send off for our opening match of the 2022 New York Team Girls Junior Gold Champions? Thank you, Rob Gotchel, in house announcer. He's been on all the shows. Rob doing a great job out here. I want to thank everybody from the IBC Youth Committee and everybody from USBC for putting on a great Junior Gold Championships. Carolyn, here we are. It's the U15 girls. We're getting things started out here. It looks like Kaylin Block is going to start on the left lane. Of course, Samantha had. Lane choice, and she's making Kaylin start the match on the left lane, which has been tighter throughout all our other telecasts. Light mixer. And watching the girls bowl over here on three and four, which is the warm-up pair, they were basically playing them exactly how the U12 um, boys and girls were, were playing them. Uh, and that includes the two-handers, and I'm talking about the break point. And as you can see, we saw it just right at that right there right over the tracer everybody playing between that 8 and 10 11 board down lane using a strong ball great shot both players in our opening match are both 15 years of age wow what a great direct look to the pocket there look at how how her hand is so steady and behind it as she's coming through and just dead, if she's behind it and then just rotates right around, it gets that thumb right out of the ball. Wow, what great ball roll. Her line to the pocket really reminds me of exactly what Anna Callen was doing, who was our U20 girls champion about a week ago, playing that exact same line up the boards, looking really nice out there.
light mixer on that left lane. I'm telling you, that left lane definitely is a little tighter down lane. I think it's just a characteristic of the lane. But again, we are looking at both ladies using stronger bowling balls, even a little bit of surface. So of course, I don't know if they've been watching the matches before, but again, we don't know what pattern we're bowling on, but it seems to be breaking down uh, the same way. Kaylin Block from East Islip, New York. This is way left of target, as you can see, just in between those tracers, which means you know it's gonna be left. Not very forgiving. Many bowling balls have not gone down the lane yet because they only get a few shots uh, before they start on the TV pair, as well as we've only thrown a few on the TV show. So obviously, even though they're going through transition, there's no hold that's developed yet. Nice spare. You know, Kaylin is very athletic, and I had a chance to talk to her a little bit in the warm-ups. She plays a lot of softball. She's a big New York Yankees fan, loves Aaron Judge, right, rightfully so. He's got a lot of power. He's leading the league in home runs right now. But she loves to play softball, and she's very good at it, very athletic, very tall player. Messenger misses. Much better shot than on the right lane, but still right here. Great rotation on that shot. Comes in just a little light, but gets the seven pin out, just leaving the 10. You can tell her hand in her backswing moves if you watch. Right there to the side. Let me tell you, that's a characteristic of pitching. When you're playing softball, see that a lot. Of course, she gets right back into position. There Changes it is. ball to shoot the spare. No problem there. We got a big crowd here. We've got a lot of folks crammed in here at Fair Lanes. Our host, Lanes 9 and 10, our championship pair that we've used for all the shows. This used to be Lanes 1 and 2 before they installed Lanes 1 through 8. Not sure how long ago, but this was the end pair for some time. So now Samantha from Pearl City, Hawaii. Finished fourth in the U-12 in junior gold previously. Another good shot. Right here, see that hand right behind it? Gets her thumb out and just gets right through it. Boy, she's way up the back of it, but then just rotates right around it. What great ball roll, I'm telling you. Unbelievable how all of these ladies, right, um, just, the athleticism, and again, we keep talking about it, is just they're so far ahead. And, you know, as, as soon as they leave one group, the U15 group, and hit the U18 group, there's a group out of U12 hitting the U15. Like, oh, I yeah. don't know if anybody can get ahead, you know and what it's I mean? very difficult. Of having com competition. Kind of high Lua looking to open up with an opening four bagger. There it is. Yep. Lofts the ball onto the lane just a little bit, conserving that energy and taking all 10 into the pit. See the crowd. Got some dignitaries here as well. The one thing you preach all the time, CDB, is what great fundamentals these players have in all the divisions. And we're mm -hmm. certainly seeing this again here today. Absolutely. And really, it's... Uh, the foundation in any sport is what leads you to getting to the next level or getting you over your hurdles, whatever it be. And as you can see, everybody stays with their shot, watches the ball until it hits the pins. Um, now, I will say Kaylin doesn't use her legs as much as maybe some of the other girls do. But again, because she's so athletic and plays other sports, she makes up for that in other areas. Not only that, the more she bowls, the better at that she will become. Goes a little bit high, that left lane. Right here, you'll see, just gets around the side of it and misses left. 
leaving the 3610. She's got a lot of support as well. Her dad, Dan, mom, Nicole, sister, Kira. She's got her boyfriend here too, Brandon. Want to give him a shout out. He's a Rangers fan. I won't hold that against him. <laughs> oh, misses the 3610, taking the 610, leaving the door open for Samantha. Also, I can't forget she's got her friend Matt and Matt's parents here as well, cheering her on. She's got a bit of a hole here in the fifth frame. She's got 87 in the fifth. And Samantha has not missed through four frames. Remember the winner that is waiting, the winner of this match, I should say, Avery Dumigan has to be defeated twice. It is true double elimination. Well, I'm not sure there's any jitters here in these opening frames. Every shot has been, except for the first one, was light, I believe, on the left lane, if I'm not mistaken. Left, yeah, but, right, but left, right, it was left. a CDB no, hit, right, though. It was, right, it was you're right. perfectly executed you're like right. you, you always did. <laughs> no, she started on the right lane, so that, that was my mistake. Um, You know, we talk Look at that solid. I just that's unbelievable. She's so aggressive through it at the bottom. We talk about this on every show, but you know mm -hmm. it's four qualifying squads, four patterns. Uh, the the U15 had an advancers round of five games, a second advancers round of five games, 26 games before they got the double elimination match play bracket. This is pattern number eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Well, I guess she means business. And I would say she has the best look on the lane right now. Again, we're looking at that tracer, that 8, 9, 10 area. So if Avery is watching, she obviously can get a great read on the lane right now because she's going to be the closest to throwing it uh, where uh, Samantha is. All Keep, right. Keeping it a little more in front of her. Great shot by Kaylin. High flush. 237, the max score for Kaylin. Still a very respectable score and can apply pressure if she were to take it off the sheet. A lot of work to be done. Double here in the seventh. That's where it would begin. All right. Very good shot. Makes the adjustment on the left lane. Excellent shot by Kaylin. She's saying, uh uh uh. Things aren't over yet. We got a lot of frames to go. Look at that. Excellent shot on that left lane. The one that's been giving everybody just a little bit of difficulty. Gets that ball just a little bit right on this right lane, but we've seen that earlier, correct? That is the U12 boys get that ball to the right. It just tickles the head pin. And I would, I'm going to say split the 4-7. There you go. Kind of high, Lua. She is rolling here. Front seven. Is there Some any? of us in the streaming world, we call that the ham turkey dinner. The ham turkey. I'd like to know if there's any extra scholarship money for 300. <laughs> We're all looking at Jason Thomas. Do you have an answer for that? <laughs> There's no phasing Samantha right now. Look at this, two light hits, the other ones pack, pack, pack.
fantastic week for Kaylin. We will see her again, I am sure. Like I said, I predict we're going to see a lot of repeaters here as they hit the U18, because they'll all be, I'm sure, out next year, right? Because they're age 15. Mm -hmm. In the U18 and U20 as they progress forward, yes. So the best Kaylin can get to right now is 214, of course. Samantha already at 210. So as you mentioned, great week for Kaylin. Going to finish third. Pulling a nice game here, but just oh, running, in, game. running into the buzzsaw here. And by the way, you didn't see many eight-baggers no. this week mm -mm, at all. No. So when the lanes are tough and you have two bowlers that are breaking them down the right way, lanes can develop very nicely, as we're seeing right now out of our two, first two U15 girl bowlers. Yeah, and, and 300 games. We did have three uh, in the U18 girls division, and we'll have that step ladder coming up for you tonight at 6 o'clock here on Bowl TV. Juliana Juju Kerrigan, Malia Miskevich, and Melanie Straub, all bowled 300. But that was in the U18, no U15 300s in the girls' division. Well, here we have Samantha stepping up into the ninth frame, working on a perfect game, the front eight. She's using a... 900 global reality this is reality get it <laughs> uh, M&M right down the road back to reality <laughs> as well defying gravity here oh, what a fantastic shot off the front eight, right here. I mean, ever so slightly, I mean, right over that tracer, maybe a board left. Oh, ring 10 still, that could have went. What a great run. Hey, college coaches, says here on her bio sheet, still in high, high school, school. <laughs> undecided. Undecided right. on college. Wow. I even like but, her spare shot. We've but, seen we've yes. seen on this championship pair that sometimes you can cut a little short, no doubt or there. Mm -hmm. She uses ball speed and also just flattens that hand out. But I do like the fact she already knows she wants to be a doctor or an anesthesiologist. I'm going to assume that's the word anesthesiologist. It is. Yeah. I I'm reading it that way. Mm -hmm. Makes perfect sense to me. And, you know, not only does she give us a little bit of a curveball, her name is not one of the easiest for us to announce up here, but then she puts anesthesiologist down <laughs> on our on what do you want to be when you grow up. Thank you so much, Samantha, making it very easy for us up here in the yes. booth as you make the lanes look so easy here on this telecast. Light hit pin coming around, just tapping the 10. What a fantastic game. And again, a great week also for Kaylin, who wants to be a physician's assistant. We've got some smarties in the, in the crowd, don't we? We sure do. And I'm going to get in all these shout outs here that Samantha wanted me to get in. So first of all, her friend back home in Hawaii, Roddy, gave her an origami frog for good luck. And she told me there's no way she would have made it here without that origami frog. Also, she wants to give a shout out to her mom, Naomi, her papa, John, her auntie, Tracy, her friends that are the Bat Crew, and Aiden, to be particularly called out, and her friends from back home in Hawaii.
266 the final score. For Samantha. Let's see if we can get a couple of strikes here and get 2-0 for Kaylin here. Solid game, as you said. We look to see her again in the future. Very good shot. Whether it be a junior gold or maybe PWBA tour, you never know. Absolutely. Again, she's only going to get better and better, as well as Samantha. Again, they're 15. There's going to be a lot of development between the 15 and 1920 age range. And uh, with this start and the way they are now, it's only going to get better. So 192, now the max possible score. Pretty good uh, showing here on television. You know, I remember whenever folks made their first PWBA or PBA telecast, you go out there, you hope to bowl 200 or better, get your legs under you. And, you know, we've seen here, you know, pretty solid bowling. Mm -hmm. I was just hoping to get a couple clean frames and get the jitters out. He made it look easy. Great game. 266, 192, the final. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our third place finisher on a great week of bowling, Kaylin Block. When we come back, everybody, we will have our championship match. Remember, Avery Dumigan, she has to be defeated twice. We will see if Samantha can do it. If anybody can do it, it's probably Samantha. We'll see you here in a moment here on Bull TV. Ever since the 1890s, when Brunswick first got into bowling, we've always had the passion and we've always tried to create and innovate new products. Bowlers' interests are always changing, whether it's ball color, ball motion, lane conditions, and performance. At Brunswick, we always try to improve performance and discover new colors to meet those bowlers' tastes. Whether it's outstanding performance, beautiful colors, or just how it feels in your hands, Brunswick is bowling. to me is being the best that I can be, not just in bowling, but in life in general. What drives me is to be the greatest player that's ever played the game. That's ultimately the goal. You can't ever reach a goal if you don't set it. So um, if I set myself up to try to be the greatest player that there ever was, if I miss that goal by a little bit, I'm still gonna have a pretty good career. Get motivated. professional tournaments. We won a lot of tournaments worldwide. I mean, uh, we won more in the last 10 years worldwide than any company. We, we make good bowling balls and we, and good players use our bowling balls because they can win with them. Swimming in my head I've been dreaming of the air
Welcome back, everybody, into Junior Gold. What a great opening match we had. Samantha Kanahalua, she stole the show. 266, had the front eight. Some people in the chat say we may have jinxed her by mentioning the, the possibility of a 300. But I say no, it was it was that it was that 10 pin. <laughs> no. Yeah, she came out strong. I mean, from, from frame one. But honestly, you know, both girls got out there hitting the pocket. Yeah, eventually, uh, you know, Kaylin went a little high there, but you know, great showing by both girls. She is strong. She has a good look on both lanes. I think she now knows that that left lane is the little bit of tighter lane, as uh -huh. we can see, because by her last two shots, she left the light 10 pin, and then she left the 210. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when she comes out of this waiting with this, you know, I call them commercial break. She's waiting for Avery, obviously, to throw her shots. It'll be in interesting to see if she makes a move or if she just slows down her ball speed, you know, could have been just a little amped up, you know, you're shooting 300, then you left the nine spare and you just still, you know, are a little, you know, your, your emotions take over. Uh, but I think she has the best look, but I do think Avery will be playing the lanes pretty similar, pretty yeah. similar. She, she's got a ball in her hand. I, I watched over here in practice. She put a little more surface on it uh, before they started practicing over here, of course. Um, so I think she had two options, one with a little more surface and one with just in between. So uh, it'll be interesting to also to see which one she chooses to start with. Yeah, Avery Doom again coming up here. She's got to be defeated twice. Mm -hmm. Also on tap, don't forget, we got our U15 boys coming up after this one. Where our top seed Kai Struthers will have to be defeated twice. Our number two seed is Buddy Landon Jordan. And the number three seed, Keegan Alexander. Star-studded field coming up here in just a little bit. Hey, I want to go over our other finishers here in the top 16. I will let Rob uh, make his in-house announcements. So should Samantha win the first game, they will have to go to a second deciding game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Championship match in the U15 girls division the 2022 Junior Gold Championship. Quickly, other finishers, Caitlin Stahl, she led after the advancers round number two, followed by Caitlin Abigania, Abigail Starkey, Gianna Brandolino. Of course, Samantha here was fifth. Avery Dumagin was sixth. Haley Swindle was seventh. Kayla Starr, eighth. Maya Green, Lariel Tharps, who made our U12 last year, jumps into the U15, gets a top 16 in there. Kaylin Block, who we saw in our first match. Macy Jones, Sierra Gabriel, Alex... Alexa Escamilia, Kendall Balea, and Taylor Kretsch, your top 16 this year in the U15 girls. First shot from Avery. Again, perfect fundamentals. Looks a lot like Samantha. You're going to see a similar style. Lots of leverage getting into the line. Again, gets that thumb out of the ball where they're able to just rotate it right off of their hand. Perfect shot, leaving the flat 10. Avery Doom again from San Diego, California. She's a big Padres fan. We were talking about a little baseball down there. <laughs> Favorite pro bowlers, Tommy Jones. Loves the way he throws the ball. Now, interesting. So Avery chose to start, which means she will finish on the right lane, uh, which... I don't know, depending on what you're looking for, I felt like the right lane has always had a little bit more hook, especially if you get it to the right, where the left lane, it's more of the hold you're playing on the left lane with the look of the two ladies uh, of what they have right now on the pair. Got that ball just a little bit right, how we just said on this right lane, right? And look at it, out to about the seven, the eight board. Comes back high flush, kicking out the 10. She's got a gorgeous ball reaction out there today. I mean, I don't know any other word to describe it. I mean, it is just perfecto. The ball, the speed, the rotation, the area on the lane. She's got it all going on right now. And you're also watching.
pre-shot routines every time from both ladies and also from uh, Kaylin. It's gonna roll over there. It's, it's probably gonna over. touch it. Not, not quite. Great shot coming in half pocket. Pen trying to get over there, but didn't. Leaves the ten pen. Mailman knocked on the door. Nobody was home. So the adjustment on that left lane. Remember, she went light to ten. So a simple move. And I honestly, I love her ball speed and the way she's throwing it. So I wouldn't want to manipulate any of that. I would make just a one and one, really. And I would go back to the right and just keep it going. You know, Samantha averaged 192 through 26 games of qualifying. Which but, is excellent. But she's got 240 ball reaction on the show here. <laughs> yes. Isn't it amazing for one game <laughs> what can happen? <laughs> Let's not take anything away from Avery here. Avery made a great opening shot. She's got a little bit longer pre-shot routine. Mm -hmm. A little more deliberate. Oh my. Wow, I thought that was halfway off the deck. Playing the same part of the lane, but this ball's very slow off the spot. Again, she put some surface on. She had a couple different surfaces. This one had the most on it. So it's picking up way earlier, a lot smoother down lane, just not kicking it off the deck, leaving the seventh. And I think, do we have to have it set up? Did it fall off, I believe? Yes, exactly. I to look around the, the bleachers I thought there. it was halfway, I'm telling you. When it, I saw it move over a little bit. But if you're Avery, you got to be happy with your first two shots, especially coming on to the pair fresh. After Samantha just pulled 260, mm -hmm. you come in, you hit the strike pocket both times. Oh, I, th I thought she would have a good look watching where Samantha was playing because they have similar ball roll, similar styles. Uh, I do think that uh, Samantha does get the ball out onto the lane a little bit more. So with pitching it a little bit on the lane, it conserves a little more energy, which is something Avery could do. Stay with this ball, maybe just get it on the lane a little bit more, have it conserve just to get it to pop just a little bit more on the back end. By the way, Avery Doom again. Her primary coach is Mark Baker, and she also gets help from Mike Jasnow. A couple of good coaches there to be learning from. One pin match through two frames. Take a minute to thank the entire Grand Rapids USBC, all their volunteers for working the party in the park, working the events, being part of Junior Gold this year. Great local support. Appreciate it, Grand Rapids. What did you see there? I think the ball's too slow. I really do. See how it's just rolling and it's just not grabbing that lane. It's almost going too forward. So to me, I think she needs a ball that's a pinch cleaner. Gives her just a little bit more on the back. And I'm not saying, you know, hockey stick. I'm just saying right. just something that's a little cleaner is gonna conserve a little more energy and make that, make that turn through the pinch just a little bit cleaner. You often talk about touch and, and making little adjustments with your hand and mm -hmm. things like that too. Could it be a, a hand 
placement position and stay in the same ball, or do you I, like a new ball more? I, I definitely think with this one it's the ball. Okay. But because you know why? They're repeaters. Both of these ladies are repeating off their hands, so they're getting a good look on the lane. And honestly, she has, what, seven more frames left? She does. Why do you want to manipulate? Okay. Right? Yep. They, again, they were only allowed five bowling balls, correct? So I'm sure they know what each one of those balls do, and I would just, and you could stay in the same part of the lane. This is not a big, hey, change balls, and I got to move four and three, okay. or, or zones. I think this is the zone to be playing, as we've seen, which everybody should be watching because they've played pretty similar. So to me, it's all about making a ball change, staying in the same area, throw another good shot. Good points, good points. You know, Avery using a, a very high in surface bowling ball. Samantha using a ball that's got some lane shine on it, it looks like. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's polished, probably just lane shine yep. on this ball. Getting the job done. Carrying those light hits. Gets this one inside and in front of her just a little bit. Still great though, still great motion. She's carrying the light hits and the high, you know, the in the pocket hits. So that's when you know you're doing the right thing with the right ball. And again, you're down to one game. You have seven frames left. You don't really want to manipu be manipulating too much because the match is close. You don't want to give up possibly having, you know, Greek church. Right here gets this inside too. Look right here, almost over the tracer, about 9-10, a little more direct. Leaving the light seven. You know there's always transition going on. Lanes are always changing. So right there, lanes going, ball's getting down the lane just a little bit too far. So again, that's why I said, we did see those couple of shots where when you got them to the right, it picked up just that little bit off the pattern. So again, maybe a one and one, or you know what? Maybe even just one with your feet. Keep the, the angle the same. I will say if we had Specto data here, which we don't, I think we would see some real consistent speed and accuracy from our vantage point here. Samantha's pretty much been splitting boards out there. All right, let's see here. What is young Avery going to do? I, I believe she's visualizing what she wants to see from the shot. It's a lot of pre-shot routines these days. You visualize what you want to see the ball do. That's what she just did. Wipes off the ball with the chamois pad and is going to stay in this ball and maybe give it another couple of frames and see what happens. She's been close. I don't know what her ball progression would be at this point, but let's see. She can knock them all down here. She grab a little more of that one. Same result. Seems like she got around that one just a little bit. Right here, got it out on the lane just a little too, which is great. But see right here, see how it just starts to go forward right there at the end? So that to me now, she is, I mean, you got three nines, the light two seven. Carolyn, you saw it before I did. I'm going to just say it right here. That's why you are so good at reading lanes, reading ball motion. That's why you're sitting here next to me. You, I think you're spot on with this. I like to see that. I like to see hand up the back of it, picking your spares. She's smiling. She feels pretty comfortable here. Here goes that pre-shot routine, the visualization again. You know, a trend is your friend in bowling. And you see, especially like on the guys tour, when I cover the guys tour, you look at no strikes through four frames and you're mm -hmm. around the pocket, right? Mm -hmm. That trend there tells you something's got to change. Right. The other part of this is she has to be beaten twice. So 
even if she were to change balls and, and it doesn't work out, she still gets another game, but now she'd have a read with two bowling balls to give her that possible advantage going into the second game, if it went to a second game. So we'll play devil's advocate. She's gonna stay in this ball here. She's still in the match. Mm -hmm. Samantha has yet to double, maybe playing it safe and continuing to hit the pocket and see what happens is the play. And there we go. Looks like she got around that one just a little bit and got it to the right if we look. See where it is. Out to about eight, a little bit stronger off the end of the pattern. I think, I think everybody's trying to play that 9, 10, 11, which I think is the hold spot, especially for the, the, the women. If you get a little right of that, it doesn't overhook, right? Because of, of lower revs instead of the two, off of the two-handers is what I mean. But definitely great rev and rotation off of these uh, two young ladies. Samantha's been perfect on this right lane this game. Oh, the light 410. A little unusual leave here. Yes, and that did not look like that bad of a shot. Comes in light, but leaves the four, light 410. You know, you don't really, that's not a light 410. Do you ever see really a light 410? Not mm -hmm. usually. No. That's what makes bowling so great and so unique and has so many people second guessing things all the time. When you're throwing a round object mm -hmm. at these oblong pins with a neck and it has the hit machinery oh. parts, almost picks that up. It, yep. it, it creates, you know, weird things in our sport, inconsistencies. Right. The other part of that is Samantha does have pretty darn good ball speed, which I really like. So again, could be throwing it just a little bit harder, but she is she's opting for a ball change. This ball should be just a little cleaner and give a little bit more kick on the back. I think. If it's the one I think it is. I can't. Looks like a the Zen. Zen. I'm a, I'm actually a little shocked at this ball change already. You expect this ball to come off the end of the pattern a little bit stronger? Just a little bit. Okay. She knows her equipment. Oh, wow. 2 four, ten. Still playing the same part of the lane as you can see. Right there, 9, 10, perfect. See, to me, I think it's just more right to left now. She, don't forget when they first came over, your surfaces were fresher, right? Things like that. So right now, again, I like where she's at. I think she's gonna make the move to the right. I don't think she's moved to the right yet. She opted for the ball change. She, again, I love her ball speed. So to me, either go back to, either go back to the reality and make that two and one to the right, or make it with this one. Gave both splits a run though. This match has turned around. Certainly well, has. Well, not turned around, but she really did have the best look. I yeah, mean, the wheels have fallen mm -hmm. off here in the fifth and the sixth. 95 in the sixth. Now Avery, you know, if she were to, to fill, you know, just with a spare here, she would be ahead by one. Mm -hmm. If she strikes, she can take an 11 pin lead right here in the sixth. Avery looking to get it done. And, and you know, she's safe bowling. She's hitting the pocket, using a ball that isn't necessarily going to go too sideways through the pins. Her carry has been minimal so far. Looking for her first double. There it is again. Great shot, but you see the angle of that ball a little bit further to the right. Let's watch right here, about 12 out to about seven. Smoother, more off the pattern. That was a great shot. It was. And, and here's the thing. If this match wasn't where it was at, that again is a sign that that's more the ball than her because now she's gotten the ball right. She's still leaving a 10, right? She got the ball in left the 10, left the blower seven. I mean, so to me, yes, that's what it is, but she's got a good look. She has a chance to take the lead in this match. Kind of slow it's and steady of, wins the race, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Great spare. I mean, she's doing the norm Duke. 
And mm -hmm. I, what I say by the Norm mm -hmm. Duke is Norm, like all the time when he goes at that 10 pin, he double taps the pin. Mm -hmm. He hits it once and then he hits it when it goes into the back and hits the curtain. And that's what she's doing at her spare shots. So she's got a one pin lead right now. Excuse me. That is not correct. No. <laughs> I was one frame <laughs> off. That's okay. Yeah. 116 in the sixth if she were to throw a strike. So we call that. We 11. call. Yeah. <laughs> You were close because you mentioned 11 earlier. <laughs> Strike here would, would bring it to 21. Mm -hmm. Area check on that one. Her first, her first bad delivery of this championship match. And you could kind of see it off her hand. She didn't get out of that one as quick as she has been. She gets out of the ball pretty darn quick. You kind of watch here, it's almost, she was in it just a little bit longer, wasn't able to get her thumb out of it and rotate around, just a bad shot. The other, the other part, I mean, if we really want to discuss it and get into it a little bit, I mean, if she's watching her carry with this ball, is she forcing it to try to strike? Which could be that type of shot right there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that happened. I'm going, but these are things that do happen when you're on TV. But cleans up the spare. 222, the max score for Samantha. 215 the max, excuse me, 215 the max for Samantha. Avery, the max score is 222. So question, are the arrows confusing you sometimes when you look down? I I, I think that's what I do. Yeah, I do. yeah, that is the <laughs> issue, Carolyn. We've had that issue on a couple of shows here. It is totally remember, on us. Do you remember the little cartoons with follow the bouncing ball? Yeah. <laughs> Went back to the reality, I believe. Did she go oh, back to the reality? She did. Wow. That's not a reality. No, it's That's not. That's another ball change. Hooks a little bit more on the back and just paid full penalty. Did not look like a bad shot. I, I can't see what it is. Could possibly, I don't know. I'm not gonna take a guess. It, it, both balls have, have a pinkish shade in it. That's why I thought it was the same ball. Proton physics, maybe? No. I'm guessing, no. Okay, she got one. Now she's had three opens. Right now what I would do, here's what I would do. This match is still close. It really is. I would step back and I'd say, what ball did I have the best, best look to the pocket with? And at this point, I would probably try to just manipulate eyes closer, further down, and make it work. Nine hundred global. Oh, Zen Master. Never read it. Right here. Looked like a good shot off her hand. Nice of it just never see how it just started to go. Forward on the back. We've seen that twice on the yes, left lane. Out, the of the, left out of the two balls she switched to. Yes. I hate I hate to make this about bowling balls all the time because it really should be about the athletes. But we're really seeing a chess game here of, of mm -hmm. which which game which which ball to use. We've seen one player stick with a ball that that isn't carrying for her, but she's around the strike pocket, and now Samantha's trying to search around and try to string strikes, and it hasn't worked out for her. No, and, and like I said, right at this point now, she had, you know, the two didn't really read, the one went light. I would go back, what what did I do in the beginning of this game where I was at least in the pocket, wasn't carrying on that, I believe it was the left lane, right? Because I believe she started on the right lane, right? Left, right, left. I would go back to that ball and make my move based on where I ended. Yeah. So wherever I was in the fourth frame, on whichever lane I was getting that nine, 
I'd make that one and one to the right and keep the other lane the same. Meanwhile, Avery here just continues to make good shot after good shot. She made the one errant shot, but she, she stays clean here. She's going to win. Second strike of the match. Comes in the eighth frame. A little bit, a little little bit more, bit more. Yeah. Yep. But you can see with getting around it just a little bit more, see how the ball just tips ever so slightly, just a little bit more at the back. Gives her the reaction she needs. 172, the max for Samantha. 222, the max for Avery. Strike here in a night just about seals it. Another fantastic shot. She did what she needed to do on this left lane, which I believe has now been the trouble lane. She leaves the 10 pin. She spares it up here. She's still pretty much well in control of the match. Going at a 190 pace, 172 the max for Samantha. Oh, she's got to make it. If she were to miss this, she'd have 160. If Samantha strikes out, she would need a mark in the 10th frame. This spare here just about seals the deal. She does it. And right here, right up the back of that ball so it never hooks. It's perfect exactly what you're supposed to do throwing at spares and and here's something else especially for all the young kids that are watching so remember we had samantha come out with the front eight look how fast the lanes can change you know i mean they change every time the ball's going down the lane jesus even when balls aren't going down the lanes there's light shining on the lanes there's air conditioning's going on air conditioning's going off i mean it's they're ever changing, right? The atmosphere is always changing, so you have to stay ahead of that transition. Here she makes the move with the ball that she changed to, the Zen Master. Great shot. I'm going out on a limb. I predict we're going to see them again on TV. <laughs> you say that every show. Mm -hmm. I predict we see them out on the PWBA tour. Definitely could see that. There you go. As we know, because Avery already competed in one in Florida and did well. As an amateur, of course. Look at, oh, but what a great finish. She made the move. What a great finish. You know, you got to feel good about that. Great shot here. Leaving the stone nine. She's probably saying to herself, now, why didn't I do that earlier, right? Yeah. How different the game is now from, say, a decade, two decades ago with mm -hmm. so many ball changes. You know, we see mm -hmm. a player bowl 260 and goes through three different balls, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. next game. And you were alluding to that. It's it's still kind of mind-blowing. It is. But, you know, here I'm, I'm going to actually kind of be a little bit of an adversary on this. I was in a conversation earlier today, and, you know, I try I try not to consider myself a super, you know, stuck in the past or whatever, because I feel like I need to keep up with the times and learn new things. And I've always been like that anyway. But I do think there are some things, because there are so many balls, and they, we lose sight of the simple things we used to do that helped us be successful, and we opt for the ball changes faster. And does that make sense? Yep. We're not relying on your, your natural ability. What a great performance by Samantha. 152, the final score. Good first game, finished this game out, proving to herself she knows her equipment, knows what to do. Avery Doom again. She hung in there with her ball reaction using the Columbia 300 speed, it looks like. And now she's gonna take her victory lap right here in the 10th frame. Feels good when you got it already mm -hmm. in the bag. Another good shot. Oh, 4-9, oh. but it doesn't matter because yeah. Avery Doomigan is your U15 girls 2022 champion here from Grand Rapids.
She's laughing a little bit. I think she was going to switch to her spare ball, and her coach said, hey, you know what? Just just, just throw at it with this ball. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Avery here with her dad, David. Mom, Dawn. Congratulations again to Avery. There's David. Ladies and gentlemen, 2022 U15 Girls Junior Bell Champion, Avery Dumagan. <laughs> Means a lot to her. You can see the emotion. Once again, everybody, U15 boys on tap coming up here in about 20 minutes. We will have an interview with our champion here in just a moment from Carolyn Doran Ballard. Glad you're with us here on Bowl TV. Also got a bowling ball to give away coming up here in a moment. We're going to give away a motive ball of choice. That's coming up here in just a couple of minutes. I'll have that for you after the interview with our champion, Avery Dumigan and the U15 girls here at Fairlanes. I'll use my phone. Okay, all right. A little beh behind the scenes here, everybody. While I'm waiting for Carolyn. I'm going to go ahead and get this bowling ball giveaway rolling for you guys for being Bowl TV subscribers. Give a shout out to our friends over at Motive. It's a Motive bowling ball of choice. That giveaway has just begun. Good luck, everybody, on winning the Motive Bowling Ball of choice. You see Melissa McDaniel down there, Chrissy Kent. I want to give a shout out to our crew here as well. Nick Hoagland is oiling the lanes. Rob Gottschall, of course, on site, running all of the in-house announcements. Gary Brown on site as well, overseeing things. We've also got Jason Thomas producing here today, as well as Curtis Von Kruger, and our new guy Caleb running the camera as well. All right, it looks like Carolyn is standing by with our champion, Avery. Take it away, Carolyn. All right, I am here with our champion, Avery, our U15 a girls division winner. Avery, beginning of the match, you were executing shots, but you weren't quite kicking out that 10. So tell us what adjustment you made. So the ball started carrying down way more than the practice pair and my practice shots on that pair as well. So I kind of just moved a little bit more right, and I knew I had to get the ball right so that it would actually pick up and turn. And I did that a couple shots. Got some good shots. Got some shots where I just had to pick up my spares, and it worked out. Absolutely. Now, uh, you recently bowled in a PWBA event. You bowled fantastic. Here, you win the tournament. What are a couple of the things that you learned bowling a PWBA event that you took with you to be successful this week? Consistency is very important. Picking up my spares is very important. And just I just have to trust myself. Trust what I'm doing, trust the process, all that. 
Well, you're doing a great job of it. Congratulations. Back to you, Mike. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Your champion in the U15 girls, Avery Dumigan. Congratulations again. Also, congratulations to Samantha Kanahalua along with Kaylin Block. Well, if you guys enjoyed that one, we got another great one coming up for you right here on Bull TV. In just a matter of minutes, 10 or 15 minutes, make sure you grab a snack. Get your favorite beverage in hand because we've got a good one coming up here in the U15 boys. We're going to see Kai Struthers again. This will be the third show in two years that I will have seen Kai. He's your top seed. He's got to be defeated twice. Who will he face? Will it be the two seed Landon Jordan or will it be Keegan Alexander, the three seed? A lot of rev rate coming up. We've got the Southpaw and Struthers, the two right-handers in Jordan and Alexander. We'll have it for you here next here on Bull TV. Welcome back again, everyone, to Junior Gold here in Grand Rapids 2022 edition. Mike Flanagan and Carolyn Doran Ballard here. We just had the U15 girls. Mm -hmm. Great competition. Yeah. Now it's time for the U15 boys. Yeah, and you're going to see the same thing. I, you know, I watched the boys. I can see everybody warming up because three and four is right here. But you're going to see the thing. Everybody, it, everybody is trying to play the same part of the lane, which tells me that the pattern might be somewhat close. Again, we don't know, but I, it's somewhat close where that break point's going to be the same. I did see something different out of the boys while they were practicing, though. Uh, a couple more ball changes. Also, playing around with ball speed just a little bit. And I did see urethane go down the lane. So that can make things just a little bit different, as we know. But you're going to see a higher rev rate. You're going to see the two guys playing the lanes basically very similar and then of course Kai will be on his own on the left which I think if we've watched USA Bowling and watched him in the past that has not been uh, a detriment to him that has been a plus for him so he knows how to bowl he is used to the TV lights he's going to be tough to beat yeah, he is. He's our top seed. Mm -hmm. Keegan Alexander, the least experienced in junior gold televised finals. Landon Jordan won last year in the U15. And Kai Struthers runner-up in the U12. And also Kai and Landon bowling on the USA Bowling Shows this year. Let's turn it over to Rob Gottschall for our in-house announcements. And Carolyn and I will be back with game number one. Welcome USBC President Melissa McDaniel. <laughs> IBC Youth Chair Chrissy Kent. <laughs> Junior Team USA Head Coach Kelly Kulig. <laughs> the CEO of Bowling.com, Ben Dodson. <laughs> and the owners of I Am Bowling. Powered by Logo Infusion, Kathy and Ken Keegan. We'd also like to thank Mr. Jason Butler and his staff here at Fairlane for their hosting of this year's Junior Gold Championship. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the players competing for the 2022 Junior Gold Championship in the boys under 15 division. In our opening match, he qualified as the top qualifier this week. He hails from Killeen, Texas. Please welcome Keegan Alexander. His opponent is looking to defend his title in this event. The 2021 U15 Boys Champion from Sycamore, Illinois, Landon Jordan. Our top seed, he hails from Maplewood, New Jersey. Please welcome Kai Struthers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Junior Gold Tournament team, we'd also like to thank all you, the parents, families, and spectators, for your support during the 2022 Junior Gold Championship. Just a reminder, bowling fans, please put your cell phones in the silent mode. 
so we do not have any distractions to our athletes. Leanne has chosen to start the semifinal match. We will be doing so momentarily. How about a round of applause as we get underway in the U15 Boys Division here at the King of Gold Championship. So as you heard, Landon Jordan looking to defend as the U15 boys champion. That's a rare feat here at Junior Gold. Not many repeat champions over the years. He has an opportunity here today. Taking on Keegan Alexander, gets things started. Familiar with this pair, he was just on it about a week ago in the U15 USA Bowling Show. He knows the characteristics of this pair. I talked to him down there. He goes left lane, hooks earlier, tighter down lane. Yep, and we have seen that in the U12 as well as the U15 girls. Even when I was talking to Avery, she said the move that she had to make to get that ball to the right, and because of that, it was, be, it was the move was made because of that left lane. Here is Keegan Alexander, both players, 15 years old, on the show here today. Keegan from Killeen, Texas. Landon's from Sycamore, Illinois, of course. Choosing to use urethane out. Landon using reactive, swinging it at the spot. Two contrasting styles just a little bit as Keegan is a traditional bowler but has a very high rev rate. As you can see, Landon is a two-hander. Keegan is using two different balls. He's gonna use reactive on the left lane, which again, we we're saying because that left lane has been a little tricky, the right lane you could basically stay on top of it a little bit longer. Ooh. Very strong off the spot. And I liked his hand on this too. He's really worked on being very soft and up the back of it, not trying to overhook it. Ball just, he did get it to where it needed to be, but just a little bit too strong off the spot. You're correct. He'll change, obviously, to urethane to shoot the split. Gets four, a little unusual way to do so. Now, because he does like to use urethane, he can, if he chooses, that was a good shot, he could basically play each lane just, you know, close uh, to get a feel off of what he needs to do on that left lane. Urethane should read it with pretty smooth, may not hit because obviously we feel like it hooks a little earlier. So it may be a little weak down lane, but it'll give him a good read. Landon picking up right where he did last year. And for a two-hander, again, you know, you see a, a bunch of different two-handed styles. And I want to uh, point this out a little bit. Do you, you see two-handers that roll it a little bit more like a Chris Vi, right, Landon. Then you see the Anthony Simonson and the Belmo that, right, a little bit more powerful at the bottom. And what I mean is that doesn't mean it's less rotation. It's just a different approach to being a two-handed bowler. We also see some of them that bend that elbow and some keep their elbow a little bit straighter, which causes the reaction off of their hand. But great fundamentals, again, when you're talking about the two-handed style. Lots of options. Oh, solid nine, and you're right. Landon does roll that ball, gets it right down onto the lane, almost like setting it onto a glass coffee table without making the, ca the coffee table crack right. or shatter. And what I, I always like to point out to people is, uh, you know, and I think there's still such a misconception out there that two-handed bowlers throw it with two hands. You know, at the point of release, if you go on YouTube, which we can, if you really watch the slow-mo videos, it's coming off their palm, just like yours is, except you have the thumb in it. And if I'm not mistaken, in USA Bowling, he left a couple of stone nines. Yes, he did. But when he needed it in the 10th frame, he delivered for his team to take that one down. So Keegan Alexander, great style. You know, he's got a lot of friends in the bowling industry. You know, a lot of people have helped him. Of course, his dad, Scott, 
and mom Stephanie are well connected within the bowling industry. It is a it is like family here in bowling, and he's had a lot of great coaching. I want to give a shout out to everyone from Texas supporting him over the years. Great shot, soft hand. One of the things he has truly worked on. Look at the rotation. Great shot. It's just that's what we see out of urethane, especially as they transition through. And when you throw a lot of ball, when you have a lot of ball speed, makes it get down the lane even further, right? So I would probably stay with the urethane if he's comfortable with it. Maybe just slow down his ball speed a little bit. Good spare. You know, you watch Keegan Bowl, and I'm trying to pinpoint who he looks like. But I can at least tell you who his two favorite pro bowlers are. Mike mm -hmm. Fagan, who is retired from the tour, and Chris Prather. Two mm -hmm. good ones to model your game after. So he's going to opt for urethane on this left lane. And I think that's a smart move. Again, if it doesn't hit, at least he gets a read on the lane of what he may have to do. Ball speed, hand, or ball change. I don't know his game well enough to know if, if, if a move in and throwing it to a spot would have, would have been good with the other ball or just ramping up on the ball speed. But we'll see what happens with the urethane here on the left lane. Wow, that overhooked too. Just a little bit. Good shot. Leaves the 4-7, but that's a good read. Picked up a little earlier. We said we think this lane hooks a little bit earlier, right? I would just make a move off of that. One thing Keegan has truly worked on is softening the hand and not grabbing it as much because what was happening was when he would grab it, it would overreact in the dry and it wouldn't hook enough in the oil. We are fortunate enough to be good friends with his parents and he comes up to visit us in Fort Worth and, and works with Dell a little bit. And uh, Scott Alexander, a PBA champion yep. in his own right. Um, and he really has come around on just being able to feel that, um, that create that feel which feels very hard to teach. So he's just now coming around and getting to that next level. Both of these players are undecided for their collegiate careers. I'm sure wherever they land, they will definitely be accepted with warm welcome. Open arms? Yes. <laughs> if I had a collegiate program, I'd be looking at him and going, you're considering me, right? <laughs> Look at this, just another great shot. Two-handed, and here's another thing. I love this because these they're so talented. But again, two-handed bowler, rolling it off his hand, not trying to overhook it, just doing a little more of that end over end to make it that spot down lane a little controllable. Landon is part of the U15 developmental team earned last year, representing our country. That's the reaction you're looking for on that left lane. Don't want to get it to the spot too early, but right here it starts to pick up and look how smooth that is off the, off the pattern, high flush. And again, you know, you don't, you don't always need the hockey stick look on the back end of the pattern, right? To make your ball strike. That's proof right there. Smooth reaction gets right through the pins. Nice shot by Keegan. Still with a max score, 244 left for Alexander. Still certainly in the match, but he's going to need to string some strikes with Jordan with a max score of 279. Look at that shot he, right there. He wasn't happy with it. I think he fell off his shot. He looked down at the approach, but got the ball going in the right direction, got it off his hand, and you know what? Good reaction. See, in bowling, you're supposed to be able to make some mistakes. Good adjustment on this left lane off of that high 4-7. A little bit more direct. Didn't get it as far right down lane. Perfect. My eyes aren't perfect, CDV, yes, but it looked are. like he was up a little bit, maybe up the back of it a he little bit more. He is not trying to overhook it at all. He's being soft with that hand, creating more of that end over end roll, absolutely, to, to create that smooth reaction on the back end.
Got that one right early, and that ball took a giant turn to the left. You could see this off his hand. Look how early this one got to the right. Lay down point might have been a little right as well. Yep, over hook. He wants to make sure he gets a count. And he does. This match just got a lot closer. 241 the max for Landon Jordan. 244 for Keegan Alexander. I can see in both of these um, young boys uh, a maturity level. You know what I mean? Like when, I, when I've seen them the last few years, when they were 13, 14, much more calm, much more process-oriented, and comes back with a shot like that after a big four, that right there is training. Players went through four different patterns of qualifying, then two advancers rounds, 26 total games. Keegan Alexander was the number one overall player, averaging 209.58, plus 249. Landon Jordan, believe it or not, was second at plus 216. Kai Struthers was fourth. So these three of the top four here on the show here tonight. Another good shot by Keegan Alexander. There you go. Caving in that 4-9. Gets it in just a little bit, but right here, almost a 4-9, no way. Right back in this match. You betcha he's back in this one. It's a nice break there in the seventh. Let's see what he does here on the left lane. Remember, went high two shots ago, flushed the last one. Important to stay soft at the bottom here. Oh, oh, a solid nine now. Yeah, and let me tell you how good that ball change was. Watch this right here. See how far right he gets that early instead of down lane? But it didn't overhook, but goes right past the nine pin. That was a great uh, shot. It was. Of that ball motion right there. Good. Good ball change. Both players now stoning a nine pin on the left lane. Sometimes bowling works out to be a little even. You know, it's sports. I mean, you can have your good days and your bad days. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just one. Of, and it just seems that it happens in bulk. You know, it's like, uh, am I ever going to carry? I mean, my God, it's been three days already. <laughs> and then you can go bowl the next two tournaments, and you're, like, tripping fours and oh blowing yeah. sevens. And you're like, now, where was that last week, right? Yeah, you carry everything all the time like Jason Thomas does. Mm. That's why you had to retire and start producing. Much better shot. There you go. You knew his, you could see the look where that ball right here. Never gets right of what, eight? Perfect. Good comeback after the big four. Both, both of these opponents, very pre-shot, pre-shot routine oriented. Talk to themselves. Oh, they, some they, mental they, training, yeah. especially from that developmental team with Team USA. Yeah, they've got so, mental coaches too. They do right. Zoom calls. They're constantly reading mm -hmm. books, listening to the same music over and over again in a concourse. I mean, they, you know, yeah, they got it all. <laughs> Sending pins everywhere. Keeps, Land in Jordan. Keeps that one in. Look at this. Just a little bit further in. But look at the light hit, and we've seen that on this left lane. The more you've kept it in, especially with the two-handers, the light hit, blown the rack. Landon can max at 241 after strikes in the eighth and the ninth. 223 for Keegan. I love it release here. Love it. Soft hand, little more up the back of it to control that back end reaction. And because of their higher rev rate, they 
blow the pins everywhere with the earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. But his maturity level, um, you know, on the lanes is just, it's, it's just skyrocketed in the last six months. Oh, doesn't quite get there, leaving the bucket. Let's see what happens here. Starts that ball way in. Didn't get it to the right. Doesn't quite finish. It's amazing that ball didn't finish, though, with that many revolutions. Not giving the pocket away. Nice recovery there. I will tell you, last yeah. year, I wanted to mention this on the mm -hmm. show. Ke Keegan made the junior team as, as the USA Developmental Program. Mm -hmm. He was a selection, and when he got selected, he was very emotional. Mm -hmm. Bowling yes. means so much to this kid. Yes. And hats off to his mother. We talked about Scott. We didn't bring up Stephanie, who I think has truly, she's the one driving up to Dallas all the time and bringing him to league. And Scott, obviously, too. But, you know, they work and they trade schedules. But Stephanie is, is able to uh, travel more than Scott. So hats off to both of them. But I'm proud of all the work he's put in. And again, not only matured on the lanes, but off the lanes as well, and put everything together to allow him to lead into the advance, top, the advances round of top 16 and, and make the show. Yep, outstanding. But here's Landon Jordan. He's got this thing well under control. He's gonna end up bowling his buddy Kai Struthers here. And, and Landon had a phenomenal look when he bowled the, the USA Bowling. He was there, he was clutch for his team. Again, two-hander, but soft at the bottom, not trying to overhook it, which is, is again, anybody who's watching, you don't have to, uh, how do I want to say this? You don't have to want to just spank on it every right. time yep. to create reaction. Look at this. For those of you that were betting, who was going to say spank on it? <laughs> uh, the Carolyn Doran Ballard, <laughs> that bet paid a lot. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Two twenty nine with a spare here for Landon. You know, good scores, two hundred games on on sport compliant patterns, 100%, right? One hundred percent. Because I'm going to tell you earlier today, because I didn't want to mention it in the beginning, but earlier today, Keegan Bowling for the TV show was having some uh, sparing issues. There it was going back and forth between him and Sebastian. So I'm going to tell you that game right there, except for the split, clean, made all the spares. So that's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Landon Jordan defeats Keegan Alexander to move on to our championship match in the U15 Boys Division Championship. How about a round of applause for Keegan? It's a great moment this week. He is our tournament leader. We're going to bring our number one seed, Kai Struthers, over some, for some warm up, and we'll be underway with our championship match momentarily. 228 to 202, the final score. I'll tell you what, that was some tremendous bowling there by both players. Uh, good bowling, good lane play, good ball change. When Keegan went, he, you know, the first shot on the left lane when he, it went high and yep, you just four, knew that four, wasn't yep. it, went right to the year thing, which he knew he could manipulate a little bit, right? He loves to just get up the back of it, but he can increase his ball speed naturally. It was a great ball change. He played the lanes correctly. Again, made all his spares, which I think is what he's really going to take away from that game. And, of course, Landon making some key shots to put the, you know, the string of strikes together, which he absolutely did also during the USA Bowling. So he's kind of familiar with this pair. I think he's feeling at home. Yeah, I yeah. believe so, too. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's you're staring my, at me. Well, like, did you not know where I was going with that? No, or were you I knew where you were going with that. But I, I got an observation here. I think is important. <laughs> mm -hmm. that I think we should mm -hmm. cover. Okay. 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 Let's uh, let's observe. Let's you're observe. Right? Yep. Keegan Alexander, 15 years old. Landon yep. Jordan, 15 years old. Yep. Kai, Kai Struthers. Yep. 13 years 13, old. 13. I was just gonna say. Yep. Mm -hmm. But he is so experienced. Yes. And so good. Mm -hmm. As we look at Kai take his practice mm -hmm. shots. I've been covering Junior Gold with you, which has been amazing. I love it. It's been so much fun. Because where else would you rather be? Uh, nowhere. <laughs> but nothing's better than Junior Gold. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the third show I've covered this kid with yep. you mm -hmm. since the last two years. I mean, he right. is a staple on our television program here. Right. And if we recap what he has done the last couple of years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He was running the ladder. He was bowling mm -hmm. tremendous in the U-12, right? Yes, correct. I mean, he was just throwing pins everywhere, making ball mm -hmm. changes, everything he needed to do. And yep. then he lost, yep. right? He lost to Mateo, mm -hmm. his buddy. And he was devastated. I mm -hmm. had more people talk to me about that interview that I did with him, you know, in mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. when he lost uh, about that one. And then we saw him the other night. Right. Where he, he struck out for his team to win by one pin. But when right. it came down to it, they lost. Right. So he he has been the, the, the runner-up mm -hmm. twice now. Right. Today, he has to be defeated twice by his buddy Land. And all these bowlers know each other. I think today is Kai Struthers coming out party. Okay. I think he gets it done as a 13-year-old today. Okay. I don't see how he can lose two in a row today. And I... I I think that's a good prediction. Uh, you know, I was going to sum it up just as easily. U12, you hear Kai. U15, you hear Kai. <laughs> you hear you say USA Bowling, you hear Kai. And he has uh, put it in the pocket and made crucial, crucial shots more times than not at the tender age of 13, yes. uh, which which says a lot about, again, and I don't think we talk enough about it because we, you know, 10 frames is just not long enough. I, we always try to talk about the bowling, but that, that goes back to hats off to his parents, his coaches, his family, his friends, the people that actually help you get to the bowling center so you can practice, help you fundraise so you can get equipment or w whatever it be. Um, what a support system he has, and that's what makes everybody an all-around athlete, all right, and, and, and he's Kai the epitome of that. Agreed. Match. This is double elimination. Kai will have to be defeated twice if he were to lose the first game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause as we begin our championship match. Kai versus Landon in the U15 Boys Division of the 2022 Junior Bowl Championship. Now, I want to make one one other comment before we get going here and we get serious. Just one. Left-handers stick together. And I'm going to tell you, Parker Bowen came up to me and goes, hey, by the way, you know, Kai, he, he bowled on TV. It might have been the Letterman show. or, And, and then you just saw Brandon mm -hmm. go over and give him a little knuckles there. Mm -hmm. Kai wasting no time. By, by the way, a fast bowler. He is. Uh, wasting no time using urethane. I'm sorry, is that urethane? Yes, it is. It is. Yep, it is. That's that black widow pink, yep. pink I urethane. I had to double check myself. Coming in just a little bit light. Now, of course, we're going to watch his first few frames as we are the whole game, but being the only person on that side, it'll be interesting to see. More than likely, obviously, patterns are not going to change very much, but I would say he's probably going to be able to just kind of stay on top of it and maybe decide what whatever he's looking for, ball up or ball down. Yep. The chair. The chair is not being used. No, Kai is. Uh, he's probably gonna. He's probably gonna be talking and walking around quite a bit here. Landon starting out just like he did last game. Hasn't changed much, just trying to make good shots and repeat. Great shot. Got to tell you, and it's from our angle, but when we're looking at that left lane, that ball just right here. It's almost setting itself up. And boom, kick back that 10. I think they call that poetry in motion. Uh, okay. Heard yep. that a few times. I like it. Looks like he didn't catch this one as much. 
Yeah, there's there's got to be a reason for you to use this light. urethane mm -hmm. ball, right? Yeah. He got his practice shots. Mm -hmm. There was something about this ball that he really liked. And this is an asymmetric urethane ball, mm -hmm. which is unique. Most urethane balls are symmetric. Covers right. the spare, gets it to hook. And Kai, well, you could see he just went like this, right? Yeah. Kai himself is, it, the, <laughs> he's soft at the bottom. Another one, not grabby, just great foundation. I mean, great physical talent. Very soft at the bottom, even with that high backswing. Even if the, if he, even when it gets up there, even if he waits on it, it's so amazing how he just lets it drop and just rolls that ball right off his hand. So right there you could see a little bit more rotation compared to that shot on the right lane. Look at this, picture perfect. I you could see the finish. Release. Absolutely. Soft, I'm telling you. It, you know, anybody who's watching who has young kids coming up and they want to get into bowling, you you don't have to grab. We don't want to grab, right? In bowling, look at how soft off the hand, left hander, right hander, uh, thumb, no thumb there's a common denominator, right? So it's just great to watch. I thought that was a little more up the lane by Landon, a little more in the inside part of the lane wraps the 10. What do you see? A little bit. I, I agree right here. You're seeing it just never gets right of eight, but still a great shot. Yeah, you know? sure. And, and again, we're bowling on, on flatter sport patterns. Um, you know, we can guess, so I think we've, attempted to to guess that we're going to say it's a, a medium-ish not a lot of volume and uh, still you can't you know the, the moves you want to make you want them to be subtle because again not a lot of forgiveness if you get it way right and not I mean the forgiveness to the left if you're too deep you can bear you know you may miss the head pin Landon, 49 in the second. Kai with 36 in the second. We call that a 13-pin lead. Remember, Kai would have to be defeated twice here, which is very consistent with all of our junior gold shows. True double elimination bracket format. Two-game total pinfall matches, by the way, on their road to the show. Gets a strike. I think he had some footing issues there, but again, kept the ball on line and gets the result he wanted. Here comes Kai. Light again. Light again. He's looking at the lane, but right here, it seems like he gets it into the lane super early. Just doesn't have as much rotation as that last shot. May have gotten just a little quick. He'll make the adjustment. He's good for a five bagger. Ball had to hurry a long way. To me, it seems like Kai has this pattern playing a little bit longer. Than, than he has adjusted for. You see it on the spare shot here. He's come in light a few times now. That could be one of two things. Either he got a false read in his practice or maybe he was nice and soft and relaxed. The lights came mm -hmm. on, he amped up a little bit, which is a characteristic that we've seen over the years by professionals. Or the lanes have transitioned a little bit after his balls that he threw in practice. Do what you see, you see there? Much more aggressive and he caught that one. I just think on this right lane, the two shots, I just think he mishit it just a little bit, not a lot. But again, he's the only one on that side of the lane. But he comes right back with a strong shot because he knows, again, feel is a hard thing to teach. And at 13, Kai knows what he needs to do off his hand.
That might be my favorite shot Landon's thrown so far here tonight. That looked perfect. Landon's in the same spot he was last game. Had through five frames, had 279 max score still going. He's got himself a 35 pin lead right now. He's got the hit working on both lanes. Playing both lanes very similar. You can see on the left lane though, ball gets down the lane just a little bit further. I think Kai's lined up on this right lane. I think he just needs to make sure he needs to dial gets up the around release it just a little, a little bit. bit. Yep. Just a little bit. Oh. oh. Uh, off his hand didn't look great, but it, the ball reacted. Let's look at this well, again. He stuck right there. You could see that, but you know what? Got the ball off his hand, kept it in the right direction, gets the break. That ball got out to about two. Mm -hmm. Which honestly could tell him something it could. about what he's got on that side. He's been rock solid on this left lane. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, he has <laughs> caught it every time on that left lane right here. He waits on it. Still smooth off his hand, gets the ball into the lane early, but catches it. Love it. Great shot. And right back in the match. Yeah. Landon needs to stay aggressive. Can't afford to see a bowling ball change direction too much down lane and leave a multi-pin conversion here. It's got to stay aggressive. Wow, gets that one right. Slow moving at the end. Watch this. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. And goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, seven pin. I thought that one there, he, he may have missed or had a little mm -hmm. different axis to the bottom, a little more up he the back of it. Definitely missed it to the right and a little more up the back, correct. You can see once the ball starts to go forward at the end, probably a little more up the back of it. And the markings on the ball as well, you can tell the labels going over the ball, which direction they're headed. Yeah, too, that's too much thinking for me, but I kind of just like to look at the motion. Uh, I like watching okay. the bowling balls that have different okay. colors on them because it looks cooler. Makes it look like it's hooking more than it really is. That used to be my trick when I was a youth bowler. I wanted everybody to make it think I was hooking the ball. He's really matched up. He's got a great ball in his hand, right part of the lane, and his carry percentage is optimal. Well, you could see it after the last game. He did not miss the pocket except for, I believe, that one shot where he uh, threw the big four, got the ball right early, and split. Kai has made the adjustment. Good footing on that one. Threw that one good too. Yeah, nothing really wrong with that shot. That, nope. That's what that might be the best executed shot we've seen on the right lane yep. by Kai. Great shot by Kai. Has a great look on the lane, especially on this right lane now, but leaves the seven pin. Now. Because of our vantage point, the way we're laid out here at Junior Gold, it's a little different. You see Carolyn and I and Jason Thomas over here with the production, but you also see Parker Bone the third over there. Who's, congratulations to Parker, by the way. He's just won his third title this year on the PBA 50 tour, and you can watch the PBA 50 blah, tour on Bowl blah, TV, by the blah. way. So as I look at this right here, he's over there talking to Kai's coach, and they are trying to come up with a game plan here on what Kai can do the rest of the game to get a look with maybe another ball. I would look for that moving forward. I don't know, let me think about, can I think about that a minute? Would I want to really listen to what Parker Bone had to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Great shot by Kai. He's had this left lane. He has now made the adjustment for the right lane. I'm telling you, he is gonna be a force to be reckoned with. 
that conversation over there is, hey, you know, mm. Parker said you might want to try so, the... Uh, yeah, right. So I had the pleasure of bowling with Parker Bowen at the Lucy Bonneau doubles. The first time we ever bowled together, we won. He is one of the best doubles partners I have ever had in my lifetime. He's so easy to bowl with, but he really does see the lane. And even when he was bowling with me, he see the subtle things, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, hey, and, but just, just, he's an all around great guy besides being a great bowler. Another great shot by Landon. Thought that pin might come across the deck. Landon in good shape here. Still max at 258. 223 for Kai. Sometimes two-handers don't quite get the respect that a traditional player gets at throwing at spares. But, I've, you know, covering Landon now, he's made three shows with this as well. You know, we mentioned Kai, but Landon now making three shows. He's, oh, he's yes. A, he's an excellent spare shooter. First of all, you don't make it this far in junior gold without being a good spare shooter. I mean, because what is junior gold all about? Filling frames and then catching your double, your triple here and there, um, you know, and, and hoping you guess right from pattern to pattern. Starts that ball in way deeper than he had been playing. I don't know if he tried something on that shot. 220. Okay. Yeah, he's got it. So, yeah, it very well mm -hmm. could have been a tester shot there. I don't anticipate Landon switching balls. He's got too good a look with this one. Okay. This will be a fun replay. Look at this. Uh, yeah. I would assume this is a stronger ball. Assume nothing, but we will see what happens here. Yep, moved in even further. Mm -hmm. Stronger ball, same result. Little bit cleaner, yep. So now he's got two options. If he wants to stay with the ball that he just shot 240 with, stay with it as soon as he sees, uh-oh, plaque 10, he knows he can make that move. And here's Kai, now he is switching balls. This looks like an obsession tour. Mm, seven tens. Yeah, that looked like a good shot off his hand too. Now I would say here, just throw a throw a strike shot again, grab another ball, see what you got. Looks like Kai might actually be trying to go for it. This would be cool. Ooh. Pins do bounce here. So Landon Jordan is halfway home, 245 to 191. Kai Struthers now, tournament life on the line here for the championship. Kai's gonna let him know let Rob Gottschall know where he wants to finish the match so, and start the match. So now what do you think I would do if I were Kai? If you were Kai? Mm -hmm. What do you think I would do? I'd put Landon on the left lane. I would get Kai to finish on the left lane. Okay. Kai should be finishing on the left lane. Right. He hasn't missed on that lane. And he has choice, right? So if he has to get up and throw it, he's been more rock solid on the left lane. His carry hasn't been as good on the right lane, right? Yeah, it's either way you play it, right? I was just thinking. Blah, I blah, was blah. thinking Landon mm -hmm. on the left lane. He knows that lane's the tougher mm -hmm. of the two from his prior show. It's in his head Could a be. little bit. Could be. And then also we just saw him go light there mm -hmm. in the tenth frame. So that's, that's where I might too. make him finish on that lane. But I like your aggressive approach as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna let my bowling ball do the talking, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna finish on the lane I like better. Yeah. And the only reason I say that, by the way, he went with the ball change comes in just a little light, but blows the rack. And me, the, the only reason I bring that up too is because my opponent shot 240. If he had shot, you know, if it was uh, 20 to 180 or something like that, it'd be a different story, but he shot 240. 
So that already tells me I need to find another two or three more strikes, right? Yep. Or I need him not to be able to shut me out. That's the way I looked at it. And Kai makes his best Great shot on shot. the right lane so far. As soon as he gets this right lane, doing what he wants, because he's been rock solid on this left lane. Oh, great shot. Collapses the 6-10. That'll loosen the arm swing a little bit. Right here, gets through it, gets it into the lane. Smooth as always, maybe just a little right. Oh, yes. He's saying to himself, finally, a double. <laughs> he He's is. been rock solid on the left lane. I got to get me a W on Bull TV. <laughs> I'm due. It's my time. Landon says, well, we'll just see about that. Now, Landon, this is, a, in my opinion, I call this a blind ball change. He has not thrown this ball on the right lane yet. I trust his judgment. Yeah. This kid really knows his equipment. Right here, keeping it. Look at this, still the same break point. Ball's just a little cleaner, not as aggressive. Off the spot. I, I see him playing more of the inside of the lane, not trying to get it so far down the lane and to the right. I don't think we have a ball. Did a ball not come back? Well, I think this is a great opportunity to let people know that Bolt TV has so much live streaming online. If you're not a Bolt TV subscriber, mm -hmm. you should definitely be a Bolt TV subscriber out there. Yes. Uh, Brian <laughs> Kane and I are heading to the PBA 50 mm -hmm. on Monday. Well, actually, we're going to leave tomorrow on Sunday, but we'll be setting up on Monday and we'll be streaming live on Tuesday. I see Emil Williams Jr. in the chat room. Shout out to Emil, mm -hmm. who's also been helping out with all of the coverage here this week at Junior Gold. And also the PWBA Tour. we got the Lucy Doubles coming up next week as well right here on Bull TV. Craig Elliott, Jason Thomas on the call. And what about all the great giveaways? The giveaway on Bull TV as well. We do that as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of Bull TV t-shirts. And I even give away things that don't even exist once in a while. So make sure you subscribe <laughs> to Bull TV, everybody. Oh, good. You can go ahead and clip that out if you want, Jason Thomas, and put that all over social media. That'll blow up. Okay, we haven't seen him go high in the pocket with this ball yet since he's changed. So again, coming in light, but this time leaving the flat 10. And we've talked about this in the past. You know, usually you need to see your ball hook first before you start to make those moves. Now he has not gone high, like I said. So again, that might just be a subtle, you know, one with the feet or a one and one right. But what you can't do is allow the door to open because Kai will walk right through it. <laughs> yeah, he will. <laughs> that ball came back from a long ways away. Looks like he moved just a little bit further left. He's playing to the left of that five board because you can see he's way left of the tracer. Leaves the blower 10. Oh, he's hooking at it. Ooh. <laughs> hooking at it like Mike Flanagan does. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I like this kid so much. He shoots bears <laughs> like I do. <laughs> hey, let's give a shout out to uh, to Kai's mom, Sharonda. Um, she's been here every year with Kai, obviously huge supporter, and uh, just does everything necessary for Kai to have success out on the lanes. And he also wanted me to give a shout out to his Jersey Lanes family back home. That's my old stomping grounds. That's where I was raised, Jersey Lanes. 
Oh, great shot by Kai. Loving this left lane. Man, ring seven. Great shot. Look at this. Getting right off the spot. Man, he's throwing it good off his hand now. So Jersey Lanes, by the way, my parents bowled there. I knew the grandfather, the, the father, and John, the current owner, who's the son of John, obviously his dad. So a uh, long generation of the Fatty Gaddy family who owned Jersey Lanes. Kelly Kulik bowls there a lot, but that's where I bowled all of my junior leagues. A lot of history that in that nice. building. Yeah. Oh, makes the adjustment a little bit more direct. Look at this. I was just going to say that ball Look looks that. like it has more Yes. Hold. He has missed left with that ball. A little bit more direct. Stone nine. As well as Clark Lanes in New Jersey, which was about a half hour, yeah, 25 minutes from Jersey Lanes. Great people. Great history. Well, we have ourselves a match here. I was just going to say, it's the true championship match mm -hmm. here as Kai Struthers has been defeated by Landon in the last match here. If you're just joining us on Bowl TV, welcome. U15 boys championship final. Landon Jordan looking to repeat. Kai Struthers looking to get a win here on Bowl TV. He's been so close so many times. And we are even Steven through four frames. Keeping it tight on that left lane as well. Just coming up a little high, but wow, the head of that pin just says, trip it. Another great shot by Kai. Right mm, here, I mean, mm, wow. Mm. Look at this. I mean, just <sighs> ringing around that seven. You can see the look on Kai's face, too. I couldn't have thrown it much better than that. He's thrown it good. He's got great reaction. So kind of like what we talked about earlier, right? It could be just a you know, ball change, something, something reactive. Go through the pins just a little bit harder because he's, he's making the quality shots. And I'm to the point now that I have so much respect for these players that when they go up and throw it a single pin spare, I just think it's automatic. As, right. if, as if I'm watching professionals mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. I just expect them to pick their single pin oh, spares they're and they're 100%. Yeah. These two are 100%. Like in the left lane, seems to be just a little bit more forgiving. I know he left the seven pin on that last shot, or I'm the 10 pin, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's anybody's match right now. One pin separates the two in the fifth, landing up in the sixth. Now an 11-pin lead for Jordan. Keeping this ball a little more inside, like just like you said, Mike. Look at that. Give himself a little bit more hold. Yet when he gets it right, reads the end, still finishes through, but not overreacts. 
or he doesn't overreact is what I'm saying. You know, his dad, Anthony, has been a great bowler in the Chicago area for many, many years. His mom, Christine, a huge supporter. His brother, Griffin, I thought his brother Griffin was going to beat him in the U15 this year. Griffin making the top 16. Shout out to him. And also his sister, Rylan, with the family. Well, that triple right there extends the lead. Again, soft off the hand, not over. There is no over rotation, allowing the ball to do the work. Both players, great fundamentals. Both have the line to the pocket. See who can carry. How about one for Kai right there? You know, finally gets the light hit on this right lane. Just tickled it the right way. We'll pop that scoreboard up here, take a look. 257, the max score for Kai Struthers. 268 for Landon Jordan. Through seven frames, high scoring match. Folks, this is a sport pattern. They are not easy, making them look easy. Another good shot. He definitely is repeating. Right here, the ball gets down the lane just a little bit further, leaving that flat seven pin. Look, I have no bias in this match whatsoever. Both players are great young men. Mm -hmm. But right now, the carry issues that I'm seeing from Kai Struthers, I feel for Kai at this moment. It is not over by any means. Mm -mm. But he has shown up here in this championship game and has continued to hit the pocket over and over again. After bowling the first half of the first game, a, a little too quick, a little too fast, maybe missing at the bottom. He has really made some great adjustments here. Right now, both players repeating, hitting the same break point down the lane. Landon has, and what I meant was not there, the same. What I meant is Landon is repeatedly using that same break point as well as Kai on his side. Yeah, they're both repeating shots. Absolutely I mean, we can sit are. here and say that one was a little in, that yep. one was a little wide. Yep. Oh, they missed a little bit at the bottom, but the fact of the matter mm -hmm. is they, they are lined up and, yep. and they, they are repeating shots over and over again in the part of the lane that gives them the best chance to mm -hmm. hit the strike pocket. That's correct. So 247 now the max for Landon Jordan, 236 for Kai Struthers. We call that an 11 pin lead right now for Landon. If he strikes in the ninth frame, he cannot be shut out by Kai. And again, two clean games, mm -hmm. all shots in the pocket. You can't ask for anything more than this. Oh, wow. Right, Just leaves the 10 pin. Probably Landon's worst shot of the match. I thought it looked absolutely, it honestly, it looked just a little slow, maybe just a little bit, where it picked up just a little bit sooner, but he got a break, leaving just the 10 pin. Yeah, off his hand, it didn't That was look huge. Bad. Mm hmm. That was my guess as well, a little slow. And we could have a, you know what? Possibility a of a tie. tie. And then a one ball roll off. Did we ever find out if that's true? I, I forgot to do that on the break. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll find out. Rob Moving. Gottschall will let us know on the, on the in-house microphone. That's correct. All right, so here is the, the situation. You know, Kai Struthers can go up here, throw a strike in the ninth, strike out 236. Landon Jordan would then have to strike out for 236. So big shots right here. 
I, I can't tell he wasn't happy with that shot, I don't think, because you could see it right there. See how that almost went? That he, was further he's out. He's flirting with the gutter. But he, you could tell he didn't like that shot. And I don't know if it was just footing or if he just didn't like it, because you could tell as soon as he was walking back. Very unlike Kai. That's very unlike Kai. Hooking at the 10 pin, ball catches just too much of this long, or this slick oil pattern, I should say, and misses the 10. And he knows it, 214, the max score here. It's, it's really all but over here. Wow. That was a good shot, almost leaving the 7-10. Just the ball just a little bit too long. So Kai can bowl 204 here. The one missed makeable single pin spare there. Final shot for Kai. Fast eight, nonetheless. Waves to the crowd. He and Landon are buddies. I know he's got the utmost respect for Landon, but this is the moment for Landon Jordan here. I mean, back-to-back -back champion here in the U15. He joined some pretty rare company. St Stephanie Nation, Stephanie Johnson, won junior gold, I believe it was three years in a row, and Missy Parkin as well. Some other folks have won multiple years, but not back to back. And there it is, Landon Jordan. Congratulations, you're back to back champion in the U15 boys division. Super impressive. Bold, very steady, both games, bold, smart. I think right after those first few shots and Kai got lined up and started making great shots on that right lane. He too, executing, just didn't have the carry. We saw Dad Anthony, Mom Christine. Winning never gets old. Never Solomon Salama also won back-to-back -back U15 right. just a few years ago, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I'd take Solomon Salama and Landon Jordan in a doubles tournament. I would think so. I take Kai in a doubles tournament. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> well, the ball change proved to be rock solid. Hats off to Landon, but what a great showing by Kai again. 236, 202, the final. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce your back to back champion in the U15 boys division, Landon Jordan. <laughs> that is so hard to do, ladies and gentlemen. How about another round of applause for Kai Brothers? Making back-to-back -back telecasts at the Junior World Championships and also won at the USA Bowl of Championships earlier this week. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a few photos real quick, and then we will be back with our Junior Team USA developmental team announcement. We've got a Junior Team USA developmental program announcement coming up here as well. Carolyn's going to go down and interview our champion, Landon Jordan. Folks, that was a good one here, both in the U15 girls and boys. Again, if you're just joining us, Avery Dumigan.
took it down in the U15 girls. Your U15 champion. Landon Jordan back to back years. I guess he gets back up on a masking unit again. That's pretty cool. Loving the trophies this year too. Hope you all enjoyed that one. I know, I certainly did. You bowled really well. Also, just to let you know, coming up tonight in about an hour and a half, 6 p.m., we've got our U18 girls and boys. Our last show here from Junior Gold here in Grand Rapids. Not going to want to miss that one as well. Just to preview that one in the girls' side, we've got Jillian Martin. Annalise O'Brien and Aaron Klumenchik. Also, we've got Hayden Terrace, Brandon Bone, and Carter Street coming up for you at 6 o'clock tonight. But right now, we've got Carolyn Doran Ballard standing by with Landon Jordan. Yes, I am here with the U15 boys champion, Landon. Okay, right off the bat. You were lined up from game one, but you made the ball change in the second game. Tenth frame, obviously, Phil shot of the first game. Why? Uh, just on the left lane, my ball started hooking early and wobbling down the lane, and on the right lane, it was packing a couple of tens, so we didn't know if I was going to need some strikes or to just grind out, so we were like, let's make the ball change now and um, just make the best shots I can. Well, you are uh, no stranger to this pair, USA Bowling, right? So did you feel like you were familiar with not only the atmosphere, but what this pair might do? Yes, I definitely knew that the left lane hooked a little earlier and that the left lane was definitely a little tougher. And also just, I, I've been here before, so, and it was, being here with my team before, it, was, it made the nerves a little less this time. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you one more question. If you were to give someone who's coming up through the U12 ranks a piece of advice on how to tackle junior gold, what would it be? Grind, grind, like 190s are great games. Just stay away from the low games and just become the best spare shooter you can be. So when I tell everybody, don't worry about the strikes, you heard it here, Landon said that too, right Landon? Yes. You bet, congratulations. Back to you, Mike. Thank you. Awesome stuff down there from Landon Jordan. We talk about it from day one. Junior Gold, bring your spare game. And it took the spares to get through those frames, but I will tell you tonight, we've had a lot of strikes on the show as well. Hats off again to everyone that made the U15 show. Kaylin Block, Samantha, and Avery. And of course, over on the boys' side, Kai Struthers, Finishing second, Landon Jordan, your champion, and Keegan Alexander with a nice performance in our opening match. So, folks, we've got a developmental USA, Team USA program announcement coming up here in just a moment here on Bowl TV. You want to stick around for that one? Our in house announcements will come on, and we have some players to be named to the developmental. Team USA selections coming up right here on Bowl TV. Don't go anywhere. After that, Carolyn and I will come in and we will wrap up the show. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can just have your attention for a few moments. As a part of the 2022 Junior Gold Championships, competitors in the under 15 division are also competing for spots on the Junior Team USA developmental team. I'd like to welcome to the championship pair of lanes for our Junior Team USA ceremony, USBC President Melissa McDaniel, IBC Youth Chair Chrissy Kent, and team U Junior Team USA Head Coach Kelly Kewitt. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce you to the newest members of the Junior Team USA Developmental Team for 2023. We'll start with our girls team. These two girls have earned their spots based on their performance in qualifying here this week. Our number two qualifier, she's making her second appearance on the developmental team. She hails from San Diego, California. Put your hands together for Caitlin Abagania.
our number one qualifier. She's from Raleigh, North Carolina. Please put your hands together for Caitlin Stoll. earn their spots based on their finish here this week of the Junior Gold Championship. Just about an hour ago, she was our U15 runner-up. She's from Pearl City, Hawaii, Samantha Kanahalua. fourth and final member of the Junior Team USA developmental team for 2023. She's our U15 girls champion from San Diego, California, Avery Dumagan. <laughs> for the boys team. These two have earned their spots based on their performance in qualifying this week. This young man was the number four qualifier. He's from Sycamore, Illinois. Put your hands together for Griffin Jordan. <laughs> Qualifier this week is making his second appearance on the developmental team. He finished third earlier this evening from Colleen, Texas, Keegan Alexander. <laughs> earn their spots based on their finish in the tournament this week. Our U15 boys runner-up from Maplewood, New Jersey, Kai Struthers. <laughs> ago. He's making his second appearance on the developmental team from Sycamore, Illinois, Landon Jordan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Junior Team USA developmental team for 2023. Yes, yes, yes. Start away, Mike. I'm right here with you. I'm texting people about the youth of youth of America, how awesome they are. As a matter of fact, I said, yeah, I'm liking Samantha's hand. It's awesome. You see how soft <laughs> she is at the bottom? I'm talking about all the kids that are just on the show with everybody. I'm not kidding. And then somebody says, oh, my God, that Landon is ridiculous. I go, and so is his brother. I mean, I'm not, I'm not just jerking around here. I just want everybody to know that. I'm, I'm talking very well about all these future youth bowlers. Well, I mean, I don't want to keep my audience waiting. Well, we had, we, we had a great, great <laughs> show did. again. I mean, yes, we say that every yes. single time, yes. but we saw some great shot making out there. 
Uh, of course, Avery uh, Dumigan wins in, in the girls' mm -hmm. U15. And, of course, Landon Jordan repeats back-to-back -back years, joins Solomon Salama mm -hmm. as a player to repeat in the U15. The other thing I, I noticed, too, and I don't know if you did or recalling it, so, you know, in that match with Keegan, only, you know, one split changes the whole match, right? Kai, only a couple shots on that right lane, then, boom, got dialed in. But yet then there was that ball change. Match was close. But again, it went to that second game. Ball change was good for Landon. He wins the tournament. Same thing with the U15 girls, right? Close, I mean, the, the first match was not close, but that second match, everything just flip-flopped, but trying to make ball changes, just hanging in there. I mean, again, they know their equipment. They know where they were playing on the lanes. They were repeating shots and great spare shooting. Keys to junior gold, everybody. Spare shooting strikes will come. Yeah, we've heard that a lot. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about it and everybody we interview, mm -hmm. I think. And I, I think, think we're going to continue to talk about it. I think so. We're yeah. going to continue rolling on here at Junior Gold as the Team USA, Junior Team USA developmental team has been selected. You see them out there posing for their pictures. I'm happy for, uh, for my man Griffin Jordan, who I nicknamed the professor. It's nice to have a professor on Team USA, that's for sure. Yes. All right, well, that's going to do it, everybody, for this show here. We're glad you were with us and joining us here today. We're looking forward to seeing you a little bit later on today for our last TV show coming up here from Grand Rapids for Carolyn Doran Ballard and for Jason Thomas and for Curtis Von Kruger and the rest of the team here. We wish you farewell and goodbye. We will see you coming up for the U18 finals right here on Bowl TV. And remember, on Bowl TV, bowling lives here. See you later, everybody.